Now, if you are trying to make guesswork and not actually solve it, uh, you should actually have a deeper understanding of the, the thing that you're playing with. Okay? And because we, we're not just guessing out of the dark. <coughs> you have to know something about the differential equation we're doing. Okay. So first, let me let me say that uh, let me talk about what linear is. What what does linear mean? Linear operators. First, operator is a function which. It takes in a function. The input is a function, and its output is a function. Okay. So what are s what's an example of, a, of such an operator? Yeah? A derivative? A derivative is an operator because it takes in a function, differentiates it, it gives you back another, another function. Okay. Integration is another operator. Or you can make a totally made up operator, like uh, let's say I have an operator, uh, usually people use something like uh, a U or some capital number, a capital letter. And let's say U of F is, say, uh, F squared plus 5F <coughs> or something like this. Then uh, what is U of, say, sine of X? What does that give us? That's uh, sine squared of x plus 5 sine x. Okay. So that's an operator. It, it takes in a function. It gives you back <coughs> a function. It's an operator. Derivative is a, an operator. Uh, now, among the operators, we're really interested in the linear operators. What, what's a linear operator, then? What does this linear mean? Well, this linear means it satisfies the following property. Number one, A, uh, if L is the operator, L of F plus G is L of F plus L of G. Think differentiation operator. If you have F plus G and you're differentiating, is that same, isn't that same as F prime <coughs> plus G prime? Right? Okay. So derivative is, it definitely satisfies this first property. Second property is that if you have some constant multiply the function, it's same as constant times L applied to the function. And certainly derivatives satisfies this too. Right? If you, if you uh, take a derivative of a constant times the function, it's same as constant <coughs> times the derivative of that function. Okay? So an example. Uh, I shouldn't erase that, but uh, eg, l equals to d dx. Differentiation by x is definitely a linear operator because it satisfies both. Okay. And by the way, this thing I was about to erase, uh, that's not a linear operator of because of this squared. This, being, this squared will destroy this property. It's, it will no longer be true that uh, so. For squares, it's not true that f of x plus g of x squared is f of x. Right, that, that's not true. Yeah. Hopefully you know it's not true. <laughs> OK. Right, any questions so far? All right. OK, then <coughs> here's some more example of a linear operator. If I say L is equals to uh, d squared dx squared minus 3 d dx plus 2. Uh, actually, I should act, let, let, let's say L of f. So that's a that's a linear operator. So so what kind of operator is this? Uh, uh, just to understand what what this means, let's see. What is L times L applied to say uh, <coughs> x squared, no, x to the fourth? Let's see. 
Can you calculate this? What's L, L of x to the fourth? It's, uh, what's this applied to this? <coughs> D squared applied to x to the fourth, what's that? x to the eighth. Huh? x to the eighth. No, you're differentiating twice by x. Twelve x squared. That's this. You you know leave this leave this notation right. This means you differentiate twice. D d x. If you say d squared f over d x squared, that means f double prime. You you knew that right? No. Okay. So so this applied to this is twelve x squared. What about this applied to this? If you apply this to this, what do you get? All right, yeah, so if you apply this, it's 4x cubed, but if you multiply negative 3, it's minus 12x cubed. Right? And then what's this applied to this? This is simply multiplication, okay? 2x to the fourth. All right? So that, that's <laughs> what kind of operator this is. Now tell me what's L applied to Y. What's L applied to Y? Y double prime? Minus 3Y prime. Plus 2Y. Yes? Yes? Okay. So you can basically rewrite y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals to 0 as ly equal to 0. Right? Because this is, uh, that, that's, that's our operator, right? Okay. Now I want to show you that uh, this, this operator <coughs> is linear. Is that true? Let's, let's see. If I have L of F plus G, what's that? That's a F plus G double prime minus 3 times F plus G prime plus 2 times F plus G, right? That's F double prime plus G double prime minus 3F prime minus 3G prime plus 2F plus 2G. So that's equal to... Uh, f double prime minus 3f prime plus 2f plus uh, f double prime minus 3f plus, no, not f, g double prime. I'm missing a prime. Huh? And what's this? That's L applied to f. This is L applied to g. So it satisfies the first property. How about this? <coughs> C times F? That's uh, C times F double prime minus 3C F prime plus 2CF. And if you factor the C out, what's left? F double prime minus 3F prime plus 2F. So indeed it's C L F. So you can pull the constant outside. You can split addition and subtraction. Okay, so it's linear. In fact, if you have constant coefficients and you have any all differential operators, that it could be like <coughs> partial derivatives or it could be just regular derivatives, any order. If you put it like this, it's always linear. You can show that. Okay. It's kind of obvious if you look at these two demonstrations, right? So these are linear. All right, now let me ask. Let's see how well you def understand what's going on. <coughs> what's L applied to e to the 2x?
We're still using that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but okay. still the same. <coughs> it's zero, right? Zero. L e to the x is. No, no, it's not. We're, I'm not. I'm not doing e to the two x. I'm doing e to the x. Which is zero again? It's zero again. Now, how we? Do, how do we know that? We just solved it. Don't you remember? We solved this differential equation, right? What were the two solutions? E to the two x and e to the x, right? What are we doing? We're plugging these into this. What else can it be? It's still zero. Yes? I mean, if you don't believe me, actually do the calculation. I mean, e to the 2x plugged in here is 4 times e to the 2x. That's uh, negative 6 e to the 2x, 2 e to the 2x. Add them up, you get 0. It's very straightforward. Right. OK, now let's see. L times c1 e to the 2x. No, that, uh, L2, yeah, C2 E to the X. What's the answer to this? Zero. Zero. Zero again, because we know that this is a solution to that. Okay? But what I want to demonstrate is the following. If we knew that this is a solution to this, and that's another solution of this, then we know that this should also produce zero because of these two linearity. That's why this property is important. So let me show you that. First property says I can split the addition, right? So I can say L C1 e to the 2x plus L C2 e to the x. Now what? You take out the c's? Yeah, these are constant multiples. Constant multiples can be pulled out. That's what this second property is saying. So you can say C1 L e to the 2x, <coughs> C2 L e to the x. What's this? What's this? Zero. What's this? Zero. <coughs> Done. OK? So if you, if you have this perspective, then suddenly you have a bird eye view of what's going on. If individually it's producing me 0, and I, if I know that this L is a linear operator, then I can say, oh, <coughs> just wait. Linear composition of the two functions, c1 times the first function, c2 times the second function. Add them up, take L, I get 0. Done. That's how I get the answer. So here, I mean, it looks like we only did some theory and not much example, but, but this is really important. So uh, when you see a differential equation, these are the things that you have to, to try to figure out. Is the operator on the left side linear? It is because we only have derivatives with some constant multiples. In that case, it's always linear. Is it homogeneous, meaning that are you going for a 0? If this is something other than 0, then you have some, some more trouble. Uh, you have, it, it, it's not as simple as this. Okay? But if it's 0, then what you do is, then if that's true, then look for solutions that would satisfy, <coughs> it will create 0. And if you find two of them, just take linear compositions, and you get the general solution. 